Hello and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 621, that's 621 of the Agostino Zynga show, I hope you're doing fine wherever, wherever this pod may be finding you, I hope you are doing A-OK, how am I? pretty well all things considered pretty pretty well it's been an absolute barnstorm of a week for me loads of content i've been pumping out i think the um, after effects of server october are still here they're still lingering over my head which is good i've still formed some good habits i'm not getting as mashed up as i was in the past and i'm clearly trying to push myself to do more and more and more in whatever free time i have available and i'm absolutely loving it my friends i'm absolutely loving it Apart from that, what else has been happening for me? Oh, I've decided I'm finally going to go to Berlin in December. So I shall be there in that massive, amazing, industrial, horrible. It's a really ugly city, but it's good for the techno and the beats and the dancing and the talking to strangers. But apart from that, it's a pretty ugly city to go visit. But I'm going to be visiting there in December. So I can't wait for that. But apart from that, I'm going to keep my head down, run loads, live loads of heavy weight, eat really healthily and then get back into all my designer clothes. I keep mentioning every single podcast but apart from that all things are doing well but we've got a jam-packed show for you today jam jam pack show loads of things to get in on so let's just jump right into it head first feet first back first chest first side first and let's do the damn thing i was lucky enough to get gifted a pair of adidas superstar skateboarding editions at work right I got given a pair because I think they were using them for a shoot and luckily they happened to be my size which is crazy because I've got a big foot I'm basically a UK 10 but now because of my feet have grown fatter or bigger or longer I now have to wear a US 10.5 so I've got a really meaty 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 foot it's not small it's not cute it's a big foot and to go and get free shoes from anyone especially stuff to do with the shoots that means the model they used was a was a massive boy and luckily that massive boy was the same size as i was and luckily that massive boy didn't even wear them they were completely brand new in the box and everything and luckily for me i also got the chance to have a pair of shoes in a us 10.5 because actually my left foot is slightly bigger than my right foot and it can sometimes be difficult depending on what you know the length of the shoe and the shape and the width of it sometimes if i get a us 10 it can pinch right i have to take out the insole in order to fit if you're a sneakerhead you'll know that trick if your foot if your shoe's a bit tight take out the insole it lowers your foot down a little bit into the shoe but it can still be tight but it can be manageable enough for you to get the look off go and stunt in the city impress some girls and come back home but i've been wearing these so i've got these Adidas superstar blacks uh, sbs as you can see there they're really cool as well because they're an sb model They've got this really strange neoprene type fabric on the upper. So it looks, it feels like suede and nubuck, but it feels a little bit different. Maybe it's been waxed. So I'm assuming if you're skateboarding in these and you're going to be rubbing them against the grip tape, doing your ollies and stuff, it can keep the condition, it can keep, um, it doesn't rip or anything or get all tatted up and stuff. The shell toe bit, because I remember wearing shell toes once when I was in church ages ago. That was a time when, you know we would honestly the church i used to go to was flipping amazing because we'd go there every sunday and basically stunt so i was that's when i was really super into sneakers that's what when i was like well, maybe 18 to 21 or something and what i would do is that every sunday i'd try to wear a new pair like a brand new limited edition one and the other guys that i was in church there with with some of my friends i used to go to church with were also into sneakers and they'd buy some interesting things but the thing i liked about that crew in church is that they were real sneakerheads in my opinion because they weren't always obsessed with buying the limited edition thing. They would sometimes go at TK Maxx, go to JD Sports and pull something and make it look amazing. That was what sneakerhead was. That's what being a sneakerhead was about. Nowadays, I feel like being a sneakerhead is about buying the most limited edition, the most wildest, you know, shoe that you can find. And if it's rare or if it's made in low quantity, then suddenly it becomes desirable, no matter if it doesn't look good or whatever it may be or if it's ugly or not which is weird but for me i felt like being a sneakerhead was like finding something on a you know on the size office offspring jd sports tk max sell rack or whatever or something that had been you know sent back or something that was a b grade and then making it work that was actually what a sneakerhead was all about and i remember there was a period of time in church we were all wearing superstars for some reason i don't know what the deal was but everyone was wearing superstars and if you remember the old superstar that came with a label they used to come with a little tag on the side 
and we used to wear the tag and let it hang down and i remember a couple of boys in our church would um would stuff a sock behind the back of this tongue to make the tongue pop out or what they do they'd fold the sock and put it inside of a sock so you you, you put a sock on top of your foot and then you put a sock over it so it made your foot look like it had a bump and then that will make the tongue come up a bit so it looked like an old skateboarding shoe so it had that fat tongue look really really funny but now obviously people like stuff to look slim and slivet and really kind of you know slow profile so these are really really slim in terms of their profile look at that right they're really slim in that way the, obviously the tongue is just a normal tongue that you'd get really flat nothing that goes on to it but the skateboarding little touches i like with the addition of the elastic on the inside and you can't see here but there's elastic on the inside of the tongue so you can basically wear them laces if need be but it keeps the foot there the upper of course like i said it's like a it, i don't know I, I guess it must be new buck but it feels a bit waxy so it's really nice in terms of the feel and they're super comfortable and i don't have to take an insole out see the insole is still inside there I don't have to take it's the first shoe I've had in, a, in many years without not taking the insole out, all because I've got a 10.5. So I think my size might have to be 10.5. But the issue I have is that most shoe companies don't make, or shoes companies and boots companies don't really make half sizes. Usually they always make flipping um, four sizes. So if I do want to wear something like a 10.5, I have to size up and get a flipping 11 which is a bit crazy because I'm so used to wearing shoes that are a bit small. Now I'm going to have to sh wear shoes that are a bit big, but I just want to have shoes that are comfortable. I don't want to be, you know, the guy that I am now where I'm wearing shoes or trainers for like six hours and I have to come back home and change and then go back out again. It's a little bit redacted. It helps that I've got a bicycle, so that may, may help things. But in general, I think it's better just to have shoes that fit. But I'm liking the style. I'm liking the comfortability. I'm liking how versatile superstars are. Again, I was somebody that when it comes to the originals adidas stuff i'm not really a big fan of campuses um i can't really i'm gonna try to make the gazelle works again or the sambas but i'm sure my foot isn't going to be able to fit in them or make them look good so there's i'm quite limited in some of the stuff that i can wear the zx is obviously are quite nice from adidas and they've got a few other bits and bobs like the um, what's everything that i like it's like a court shoe i forgot the name of it but that court shoe is quite nice the one that bad bunny did is quite a nice collaboration they got some decent stuff but i think this might be one of the first that i'm like you know what i'm gonna try and get these and there's another pair also that i'm gonna throw up on the screen here i forgot the name of them i think the the skate is called caden or something like that and he's got a pair coming in a purple and I think they're the same sort of material. Maybe they may be suede. And there's also another pair come up in the navy. So I'm going to try and get my hands on them. But I don't know, man. So far, so good. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. I've only worn them a couple of times. As you can see, they're not being bashed up that much. And I'm a big fan of them in general. So I'm going to try and get a pair. Hold up, get, get a hold of a, a few more pairs. Unfortunately, I didn't have two set of laces. I had to put laces from another shoe on there. So it's a bit longer on the other side. But so far, so good. And obviously, I'm a stickler for black and white shoes. I have so many, like legitimately so many. I actually put up another picture where you'll see an old picture of my shoe collection. And you can see all the black and white shoes I had in the past. But I've got a lot of black and white shoes or black base shoes that I like to wear all the time. Because, you know, I like to look like I'm going to rob people when I'm the sweetest guy in the world. But yeah, I'm a big fan of those. So I can't wait to have more of them in the future next i want to quickly jump and talk about the christian ronaldo interview i know some people fans especially of united are getting their knickers in a twist about the things that he said but i just want to focus on the main thing for me is that he's the first high profile or maybe the first player at all in general to call out the glazers in this way obviously gary neville has said some stuff himself but his stuff is always to and fro if the glazers go and hire a football director or if they if they hire him to basically get the club into shape suddenly he'll be quiet again so i feel like he he, he kind of goes with the wind when it comes to criticizing the glazers but at least he has said something but i think ronaldo being a current player and being somebody of his stature coming out and saying the glazers don't care about the club is absolutely important and i feel like as naive as it may be as um short-sighted as it may be for me i still think that this will in that this will eventually end up um leading to the glazer selling the club i think this will play a monumental role especially when you think about the share price and whatnot i really do think so um, that's my hope anyway but i also think in general fans should you know that we knew who ronaldo was as a person we knew his personality so nothing should be a surprise in his interview i think he's allowed to feel aggrieved about certain things maybe certain things are blown out of proportion but again we don't have all the information we don't have all the facts we're going off what we hear online and you know everyone's got a narrative they're wanting to spin everyone's trying to protect their own back it's hard to really pass through what the truth is but just from the sole point of saying what the main issue is at United, I, it never was a player 
players it never was the fans it was always the owners the fans try to you know turn the players against or try to turn the fans against the players um the players do a good job at doing that so sometimes pogba is a good example of it right they do a good job at basically allowing the fans to basically insult them but for the most part pogba was never the issue all these guys are never the issue the issue has always been the glazers the glazers have run this club into the ground and as soon as sir Alex Ferguson left the you know the the, the legendary um greatest manager of all time who won titles and trophies at United in spite of the Glazer ownership. Remember, he stepped away from the club, the club imploded. And it's no coincidence that it did because they're absolutely inept. They don't know how to run a football club and they've legitimately ruined one of the best clubs in the world by just leaving it in a state of disrepair, really. That's what it is. Because even when the new owner comes in and wants to flip in, you know, reawaken this flipping you know sleeping giant it's going to take a long time for us to get back on our feet and we've still got all these other clubs we have to compete with so it's going to be a long long process but i'm happy that this interview's happened and hopefully this will eventually lead to the glazers selling up because i can't do this no more so this is a clip of Cristiano Ronaldo talking about the glazers here at the pace morgan show i'm going to play it right now things weren't going well at manchester united the club just wasn't firing and in the end Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, the manager got sacked and that's within like two months of you coming back. What were you feeling about what was going on at United? And what did you feel generally about the club itself and the state that the club was in compared to when you'd been there before? Pierce, to be honest, when I, I signed for Manchester United, I thought everything was changed because it's 13 years that I changed. Uh, I was in Real Madrid nine years and three in Juventus. And when I arrived, I thought, everything will be different, you know, the technology, the infrastructures and everything. But I was surprised in a bad way, let's say in that way, because I saw everything was the same. Uh, and Manchester, it wasn't, it wasn't in that moment that, as you mentioned, that all he was sunk. Michael Carrick, he, he assumed the, the, the job for two, two games, Villarreal and uh, Chelsea away. Um, and everything was was so fast, but surprised me a lot. Uh, instability in the club. Um, everything was kind of the same that I that I they hadn't moved on. No, they they stopped on 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 the clock, in my opinion, which is something that that surprised me. I didn't expect. And um, slowly and slowly they start to change. Even even the the windows to new players and um, <laughs> was tough <laughs> was tough for me because i didn't expect that and because uh, when you were there before if manchester united wanted a player under sir alex ferguson they normally got their man right now it's a very different environment after many years of failure since sir alex retired united weren't getting the top players anymore so were you surprised by that dynamic changing as well? Because you would have been used before to them. They wanted top players, they got them. I was surprised. I thought when I signed that they signed in that year, Sancho and Varane plus me, that things will be in the way that Manchester should be. As you mentioned, well, Sir Alex Ferguson left a big gap in the club. Not only Sir Alex Ferguson, but one person that I thought make the difference uh, David Gill, the president, a very, very good man. And uh, the structure around Sir Alex Ferguson was very important too. I knew it that Manchester United wasn't the same, but I don't see that it was so big gap, so big things that go through by the last 10 years. And it was the thing that surprised me more, to be honest. It was little things like even the, the swimming pool that the players used, the saunas, all these facilities. Nothing had changed since you'd left in 2009. Nothing changed. Surprisingly, not only the pool, the jacuzzi, even the gym. Even some points, the technology, the kitchen, the chefs, which is I appreciate, lovely, lovely persons. They stop in a, in a time, which is, is, it surprised me a lot. I thought... Glazers out. That's why it's Glazers out. Imagine coming back to a place 13 years later is meant to be at the cutting edge of sports. What's, what's, it, what's it called? Sports science, right? Um, 
or development of athletes, whatever it may be called, health and fitness, and they've still got the same people running the same programs, the same people feeding you, the same people training you, the same people massaging, the same methods than before 13 years ago. And you came back to one of the biggest clubs in the world, not some semi-professional club somewhere. That's one thing. But Manchester United, 13 years, the same facilities, the same people absolutely horrendous that's why all that talk they had about interviewing football directors and getting them involved was never true because those directors would have come in and wanted to revamp everything but they don't want to revamp everything they just want someone to come in and be a caretaker and do and just go along with already what they've already got set up so someone like a john murto someone like a darren fletcher they're perfect candidates for those sort of roles because they're not going to question the um, hierarchy they're not going to demand more they're just going to go along with what's going going on and collect their paychecks and that's what they've done we haven't heard anything we haven't heard a flipping peep from darren fletcher a peep from joe murto regarding this whole thing it's just been blanket statements from the club and absolute nonsense so if this is at least at the end of the Glazer ownership which I doubt it will I'm not that naive or silly to believe that one man's interview even somebody as big influential and powerful um, as flipping Ronaldo will change things but I am optimistic that's all I can have as a fan because I want the Glazers gone because I'm a big believer just me I'm a big believer that until we get the Glazers out of this club until they sell up we will never win a major trophy again I'll say that clearly until Manchester United is sold and the Glazers leave and hand the club over to another set of owners who care about sporting success we will never ever be successful again these guys only want to extract money from the club they don't care about making us successful they care about doing the bare minimum and that's what they've done for the last 10 plus 10 or so years it's been an absolute catastrophe an absolute failure the moment Sir Ferguson walked away the greatest manager in our history but still uh, only a manager the moment he stepped away the whole entire house came falling down clear to show that that guy was the greatest manager of all time Sir Alex Ferguson but also goes to show the infrastructure around him was weak was weak absolutely weak so i can't wait for the glazers to go so for me hashtag glazers out hashtag glazers sell now hashtag glazers sell hashtag glazers out until the end until the end and if Christian Ronaldo brings it upon us then i'm all for it i'm all for it moving on we got to talk about the news that broke today that I just saw on social media that left me kind of surprised and a bit taken back, to be honest, because I've been a fan of this uh, party for a while from afar. It's not something I'm generally interested in, to be honest, maybe because I'm a bit of a prude and a bit of a, you know, Christian boy deep down and a bit scared of these type of places in general, even though in my head I might think like I'm, I'm, I'm that guy, but really in real life I'm not. So I'm talking about the stuff that's been happening with Crossbreed. UK sucks positive party. Crossbreed cancels events and found the steps down amid storm of allegations pretty wild right the management team will run operations going forward according to a statement published yesterday so i saw this posted on social media earlier today and i think someone was talking about the founder and using his actual government name and i was like oh it's dumb is that the guy and he said yeah that is the guy that runs it i was like damn which is absolutely crazy that they're into this situation but again it just highlights a ever increasing problem i guess in nightlife overall that i've kind of noticed over the last what few months or years that i've been covering this stuff on this pod even though i've been involved in the scene for a while but in terms of talking about it extensively i have noticed common things that keep happening especially weirdly enough within the kind of old underground type scene which i feel like was always a response to the commercialization of dance music in general right these people who go to these sort of events maybe didn't feel comfortable going to the commercial normie type ones you set up your own thing to create a quasi safe space quote in quotation marks and to have people from your own community feel comfortable to welcome into a place to build a community blah 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 showcase new eyes and then you run into the same issues that the people in the general public run into when they go into their nights out so that's a part of the interesting part of it for me but let's read the article it says as follows uk sex positive party crossbreed has cancelled three up-and-coming events confirmed the permanent unseating of its founder alex warren aka kiwi published yesterday november 15th from crossfeed's private instagram account the statement said that the party's management behind the, the post management team had this week been made aware of serious allegations according to the post warren subsequently took the decision to step down permanently and hand 
and control the operations to the management team earlier today warrens who uses the uh, the pronouns they them published their own statement on their own private instagram account i have to give alex warren credit here only because when I covered the story regarding Lobster Ferryman, one of the things that kind of annoyed no, not Lobster Ferryman, is it Lobster Ferryman? Let me not, let me not uh, speak out of turn. Whoever, whatever label that thing he runs, um, what's his name? What's the guy's name again? The guy that has the flipping meme page. You know who I'm talking about anyway. When he was involved in whatever he was involved, whenever, when he was accused of taking advantage of that young girl who came down from something Scotland to come and basically, you know, be a, part of his label and get some mentorship and try to find a way in the scene and that story went some kind of viral within our little community i was the first to say that i thought it was really like distasteful and kind of a bit of a bad move from the guy who got accused of what he got accused of to number one come out swinging and essentially kind of victim blame it felt like when he was reading a statement even though he kind of obviously yeah he wanted to defend himself but it did sound like his victim blame victim blaming sorry and also when i went on the site and checked the record label they have so many artists that have released stuff on the label that he obviously founded and i thought at the time it was really um disappointing that he didn't just step down in terms of you know taking the heat off of some of these artists that are on the label because i remember i followed a couple of them i think it might have been d dan i think it was somebody else also who other fans were then hitting up and getting in their comments and attacking them and saying hey why haven't you made a statement why have you said anything blah blah blah, blah. so he kind of unnecessarily put his other artists who were on the label under a constant barrage of comments and tweets and whatnot because he didn't step down and take the heat for himself and take the heat off the artist i thought it was horrible so at least with this warren guy at least he's decided to step down voluntarily um even though you know it might be because the allegations are a lot worse than what we've heard so far that could be the reason but still the fact that he stepped away which has allowed there to be some distance now so it can kind of be a thing of like okay he's the he's the bad guy or he's the bad person and the organization itself isn't rotten to the core and the team can maybe um fix whatever issues were going on behind the scenes and try and make it right maybe maybe it continues the most serious accusation made on that page weren't per, weren't specific they were da, 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 da. it's continue i'll read the statement in a minute Cosby statement also confirmed the cancellation of three upcoming events in corsica and bloody blah 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 it, it says here yeah let's go here let's do this one um, the anonymous account was initially set up in response to two posts on Crosby's official Instagram account, uh, account sorry, page on November the 10th. The first post featured an infographic about why making assumptions about straight passing sex was biphobic and transphobic. <laughs> that even just sounds insane, right? But hey, the second post apologized for the per first which was met with fierce backlash from the trans and gay communities. Both po posts received dozens of comments, all of which are now hidden because the crossbreed turned off the comments, which is awful, right? That's always a sign of guilt. When you turn off comments, delete comments, or go private, that I think is a sign of guilt. I know people do it for the sake of their mental health because you don't want to be bombarded with, you know, loads of people's negative thoughts on you at one time. But I think if you've been accused of what you've been accused of, take your licks, respond in due time, you know, take your way, take yourself away from social media, recover, recoup, um, regroup, and then address it with a clear mind later on. But this idea of turning off things and you think that's going to stem the flow, if anything, it makes people even more agitated and more angry to be honest but hey it continues article here and then yes they found in 2019 crispy combined a sex positive ethos house and the techno bookings it mostly ran events in london manchester clubs such as the cross cause fabric color factory and hidden a record label also launched 2009 read crossfeed and water statement in full below so this is crosby's official comment it says this week crosby management team are made aware of some serious accusation put forward by anonymous meme page against alex the founder of crossbreed these allegations came as a huge shock to all of us alex has made the decision to step down permanently from crossbreed and hand over control of the organization to the management team they will not have any he, they will not have any involvement with crossbreed moving forward and will be making the statement in due course we know the impact of the allegations will affect many of the people in the community for this reason we have made the decision to cancel our party this sunday and if i'm not if i'm not mistaken maybe I'm, I'm mistaken it might be the first or the maybe the first five or so yeah no let's say it might be the first or second party they did in corsica studios because they were doing these sunday part day party type things at color factory 
and then they had to move and then they said they announced recently oh hey we've announced a new home it was a big affair everyone was celebrating and you know being really happy in the comments so it's, it's a bit of a big blow to be honest i'd imagine um, it continues here the social manchester tomorrow and our party at hidden next saturday will also not be going ahead all ticket holders will receive a refund for these events please do recognize we as individuals are dealing with a lot and are doing our best to make the plan to make a plan that will best support our community at the moment we will have less capacity to check dms if you need to speak with one of our team urgently please email the emails there please take care of yourselves and each other and then the guy alex um kiwi responded and said as follows uh or the person i apologize for the pronoun misuse here says as some of you might be aware last week crossbreed released an infographic that caused a lot of division amongst our community it was misguided tone deaf and irresponsible i accept responsibility for the message and the harm caused in response many people feel angry part of this anger included accusations that i'm queer baiting profiting off the community wow i didn't know that is that what they accused him of okay i've been misgendered over and over again and continue to be my sexuality has been questioned by people who have never met me and don't know me in my life so what are people are trying to accuse him of like pretending to be queer so that he can hook up with more girls or something or they can hook up with more girls is that what people are saying yo that is mad if true i want to be clear i've never taken a salary or dividend from crossbreed the money i've received from crossbreed are dj fees that were in line with my rate and rent contribution towards the crossbreed office and storage in my house i have never been paid for a full-time role i've worked since its inception okay I've never been paid for the full-time role I've worked. Okay, cool. Um, part two. Our response to the infographic was an anonymous Instagram page that began sharing memes, some inaccurate and false stories before finally making some serious accusations or allegations, sorry, and coming offline. The most serious accusation made on that page were not specific, but due to their nature and impact it's having on the Crossbreed team and the wider community, I decided to step down from my role at Crossbreed and all involvement with Crossbreed moving forward. I'll be giving the brand and the overall ownership over to the team that is running it. I acknowledge how much harm is happening right now and part of this how it's how, part of this is how publicly this is taking place this is many people's lives many of whom have had no part in the harm that I've said I've done please remember that when sharing that's a little bit um what you call it that's a you can't really say that if you're the person being accused I can't I don't know what the term is I'm trying to use but you just can't say that because essentially these things have been happening in private behind closed doors people have been too scared to say anything because crossbreed's name carries a lot of weight even for myself i don't even know who they, these people i don't even go to the parties and i'm kind of respectful and reverent of what they've created so much so that i have a story time to share one time when i went to Berkeley, and this might be one of the most recent times actually i think it might be the time when i said hi to juliana juliana huxtable actually and i kind of got <laughs> cold shouldered i was like okay no more hi to djs <laughs> i think she she just thought oh what's this why is this guy bothering me but i just literally want to say hi you had a good set but hey it didn't come across the best but anyway i was in Berghain having a good time went to panorama bar was jamming and then who do i see across a room in panorama bar it's flipping kiwi from from crossbreed i was like oh rah let me go over and say hi and also i wanted to inform um kiwi from crossbreed that i'd love to you know purchase some crossbreed merch and they should look into making some hoodies or t-shirts with the logo because i love everything about the flipping party but i would never probably go because it's not really my thing the whole kink and sex party thing so i had a bit of a powwow and that was it and then in the midst of this quick conversation we're having like a minute two minutes you know me with my eyes looking at cds and whatnot this girl was in I think one of the little corridor things next to the stairs and kind of monging out in the corner looking really distressed and whatnot and then I immediately went over oh you're right no I think someone else went over that we're in a group with maybe it was a girl went to speak to the girls on the floor then I went over to kind of say something hey are you all right and I reached out kind of went just like not just going over to say are you all right to check on her and kind of put my hand on her shoulder just like hey you're all right because I think she was kind of falling over and then the Kiwi guy was like hey, hey not touching not touching like kind of like thinking i was like i was like a bit frozen oh what do you mean no touching i'm just trying to make sure she's okay and i didn't really understand what was going on, but again it's loud like i don't really pay much attention to it so got her up and i think me and the other girl that i was dancing with um we were trying to help her out but she was off her face on gsb or something ghb sorry or something 
And then eventually me and the girl that I was with on the dance floor ended up taking this lady who was clearly off her head and trying to get her to find her friends. And eventually we found her friends and let's say her friends looked a bit scatty. So it was clear that they were all enjoying whatever they must have took. I'm assuming it was GSB and they're all off their face. So it wasn't that big of an issue, but in general, we ended up finding them. Anyway, at the time, I remember thinking to myself, like, why did he, why did he do that? Like, it's kind of like when somebody, you know, when you're talking and somebody wants to do like a kind of a passive aggressive son and you're talking really loud you're talking really fast i'll be like oh can you just quiet down a bit would you mind slowing down how you speak you're talking too fast or um or someone does shh that kind of thing it just felt a little bit um it kind of felt a little bit passive aggressive and a little bit unnecessary yeah because he was basically acting as if i was trying to flip in you know assault this lady by putting my hand on her shoulder and checking if she was okay and it wasn't even like a hand like a lingering it was literally like i was she was about to fall over i was kind of like holding her like this and the funny thing is we both ended up me and the other girl ended up holding her because she was like wobbly all over the place all the way into her friends and then when she finally found her friends she kind of just sprung into life again which was kind of weird to see but maybe you know would let us know that there were some other issues going on there who knows but i remember thinking seeing that i remember, I remember that happening and be like that guy is why would you do that? Do you know what I mean? I just went over to you and flipping essentially got on my knees and gave you fellatio by praising your brand. And now here, two seconds later, you're trying to make out as if I'm doing something untoward to a stranger. It's like, why would you do that? I only bring that up to say, isn't it interesting? The people who speak the loudest and about exclusivity and all this sort of stuff. And I know it's not a safe space because they put out a post that someone alerted to me on Twitter that they don't actually say it's a safe space. They categorically say um, Koshbeat isn't a safe space. But still, they create this community and this platform and this, um, this party series to accommodate people within, I would imagine, the Flinter, LGBTQ and queer scene who are into kink but don't want to go to conventional sex parties and stuff. They want to you know find a safe space or you know a, an accommodating space for them let's say isn't it funny that those people are the ones being accused of what they're being accused of isn't that funny right isn't that hilarious i find in that regard but the thing that's distressing about this for me looking at it from an outsider's point of view that's not involved at all in this scene is that i'm pretty sure given how small the scene is and given there's some people on social media especially on instagram who are follow who are quite well known and you'd call them sex positive influencers or kink influencers i haven't heard a peep from them regarding this issue and i'm pretty sure this is well known i don't know what bit of the allegations are true i don't know if the guy did what they've been accusing him of or if he didn't sorry if, or if they did what he'd been accused of, what what they, what they've been accused of or not who knows but I'm pretty sure these allegations aren't new or aren't something that people have just found out now because this meme page went out there. And I find it also interesting how the meme page was the only way people found out about this thing. And obviously now the meme page has been taken down because whoever set it up got cold feet or maybe got threatened behind the scenes with legal um, you know, consequences. But I just find it interesting how people talk a big game in this scene or in just in, you know small scenes overall about the need to hold accusers accountable, especially when the stuff could involving people um in the quote-unquote normie world especially if imagine this happened in the tech house scene how these same people will be going off about how unsafe it is about how there's always predators especially when it be, when it kind of um is directed towards cis presenting or cis gendered males and whatnot and when it involves people within their own community they're all stum. I understand why because you know it's a small community so clearly you don't want to put yourself in the line of fire you also don't want to be the person who calls out certain things and then other people maybe distance themselves from you because they know also they might have their own skeletons in their closet i get it but it is a bit horrible to see i'm not going to lie it's a bit horrible to see because in general not speaking about these things openly and not really um, addressing things and holding people to holding people accountable has essentially led to the position that they're in now where potentially some people might have been harmed some people might have been harmed in a way you know that could be completely avoidable if this was out there in the public but because things have been said behind the scenes hush hushy you have to be in this you have to be around to know certain things things kind of go by the wayside and i think it's really 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 horrible and i think some of the allegations that they put out there have been uh, posted here that i found on twitter there's kind of a bit of a roundup on here that says the following um it says 
uh, cross, yeah, it says that Crossbreed put up his apology post, which gets criticized for being vague. A meme page pops up making fun of the situation called Crossbreed's Crossbreeders World, which encourages anonymous submissions to Kiki about the drama the meme page is immediately blocked by crossbreed lmao the anonymous submission quickly turned into a reveal um some serious shit about the event worker mistreatment dangerous and queer phobic door policy <sighs> In imagine having a queer phobic door policy at a place like crossbreed honestly crazy man inadequate training around keeping events to go as safe um the meme page admin puts up a story saying they won't be posting anymore as things have gotten very serious than they expected which is very fair but not before posting the most serious allegation multiple victims allege that the person who runs crossbeat alex is a megalomaniac um which is understandable in the kind of in that small scene if you're a promoter and you've got the biggest best presenting looking party that makes a lot of sense i think most of most of promoters are probably megalomaniac but the other one is horrible serial abuser assaulter harasser and general danger shortly after this the meme page then is deleted and crossbreed deletes his comments on their most recent and highly criticized pages but they didn't delete their hid um they, sorry they closed all the comments it's not hidden it's not deleted or hidden all the comments or deleted um but again like i said it's just a real shame there is no accountability it feels like within this within this own community which is really really a big shame but it makes me wonder also if this is just part and parcel of what happens in nightlife because essentially we've seen or i've seen accounts of abuse or harassment or whatever it may be in all of these kind of small alternative underground scenes that i feel like were a response to the commercialization of dance music you look at stuff like possession they had an issue happen where one of their founders had to step down because they got accused of abuse you look at obviously what's happening at crossbreed you've got that thing i forgot what sex party that was but there was a sex party that happened somewhere in hackney wick where unfortunately one person got raped or something i forgot where i forgot i think if you guys remember i remember reading about that so clearly there's an issue um that the issue is sort of something that kind of covers the whole breadth of flipping dance music and nightlife in general it's not something that's only kind of limited to the, to the business techno side of things and whatnot it definitely is something that affects everybody and it's a real shame more so that it affects the underground and sort of what i deemed it to be the alt scene because i always feel like those guys and girls and however else they identify do those parties or whatever it may be as self-service things they don't do them to get rich they do them because they don't feel like there's a space out there that they can be their true selves and party and frolic and do all the things that they like to do so they go and set these things up for other people who feel like them and then when they get there the same issues that they're kind of running away from in the general public in the general spaces is following them in those kind of places and it's a bit distressing it's a bit um discouraging but the hope is when things come to light when things are you know uh, brought to light that hopefully um things can be addressed and there can be some healing and there can be some restructuring of things to get things back up to where they need to be to because i don't know i feel like now we have some of the best parties out at the moment we have probably one of the best scenes i feel like at the moment in london in terms of range of parties and genres and people that you can go see on any given weekend and it'll be a real shame if these sort of events would start to like put people off to go to these sort of parties because at the end of the day you know they still were able to build you know this whole event from being a one-off party here and there to something that was happening every single sunday across the country you know selling bits and bobs on line and whatnot having great pictures online uh, uh an interesting ethos not, i would say the best ethos but a, a very clear and defined ethos that people you know some people got behind some people didn't like but definitely something that people could kind of follow and and maybe interpret in their own way or start their own thing bloody blah 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 so it would be a shame if this kind of did affect things negatively overall going forward which i don't think it will because i think there's plenty of other parties out there that are doing things right and don't suffer from all these crazy crazy allegations and stuff that's going on but it's just pretty wild to see it happening in real time and it's also pretty wild to hear the deafening silence among some of the bigger people involved in the scene in terms of commenting about it to be honest um you would expect a lot more self-policing a lot more accountability in this i know if it's not you're not involved it's hard to kind of put your you know two cents out there if it 
clearly isn't something that you've done but i don't know man for a lot of these people have a lot to say about general topics with involved within the king community but then when something like this happens to one of the biggest party series um surrounding that whole scene um most of them are completely quiet which is quite weird but hey I guess we all have our own interest to cover in it and protect. I guess we all have our own interest to cover and protect. To move on from that, um, what else I want to talk about here? We have a quick mention here regarding the Grammys. Everyone's getting their knickers in the twist as per usual. People throwing their dummies out and whatnot. And some of it is quite justified to be honest, especially some of the R and B categories. But the Grammys are what the Grammys are. They're never really a accurate representation of the music that the people are actually listening to or what's actually hot or what's actually good. It's mostly an industry political type thing. And, you know, I don't think I'm gonna get my knickers in a twist about any of these things. But I understand if you're an artist and you kind of slave away and plug away at your record or your album um for the whole entire year and you know it's really heating up the streets it's really been kind of widely recognized as one of the best and then you get snubbed by the most prestigious awards ceremonies out there it can be very very hurtful but to start off with we've got here new york times list of the nominations record of the year from the records here here on the screen i'd say the one that maybe stands out to me would maybe be doja cat maybe break my soul man let's say me break my soul let's do break my soul i think it will be the standout for me um obviously steve lacy's bad habit could be another one also but i think break my soul would be a standout it's on record of the year just because i absolutely hated it when it first dropped legitimately hated it um it came out at the same time that um what you call it honestly never mind came out drake's attempt at making tech house and I honestly thought that the reaction towards Drake's Honestly Nevermind was overblown. It wasn't as bad as people made it out to be. But then when Break My Soul came out, everyone was literally wanking it off, making it seem like it was the greatest house record of all time. And I was like, it's okay. And then over time, when you started hearing it out a lot, but more importantly, when you heard it in sequence with the album and how it was mixed, it slaps. That's an absolute tune. So I definitely will go record of the year, Beyonce, Break My Soul album of the year from the options available has to be straight away bad bunny on verano sin ti which is i think translate to a summer without you or a summer with you i think if i'm not mistaken and again, i'm not going to google it cause i don't want to guess but i don't want to find out but i think that's the case so i'd have to give it to bad bunny on verano sin ti one thing i want to mention quickly even though i'm a big fan of kendrick lamar didn't this album age quite badly like I haven't listened to it since it dropped. I banged it out for the entire week that it was out, but I haven't revisited it the way that I did Damn and the way that I did the other flipping albums, The Pimper Butterfly and whatnot. This hasn't necessarily lived with me as long as I thought it would. Whereas on Verano Sinti by Bad Bunny, I play legitimately every day. There's a song from this album that gets included into my playlist when I go to the gym and when I'm out and about. This legitimately gets played every single day. So it's interesting, no? like it didn't live that long at all obviously flipping adele will probably end up winning right that boring boring ass music will probably end up winning we know that or they'll give it to flipping abba as some sort of like you know comeuppance for whatever else they've done to them in this industry back in the day or flipping harry styles gets it but something will happen on those kind of lines you know it's going to happen um let's remove him da -da -da -da. what else we want to do here best new artist is absolutely crazy Best New Artist is absolutely crazy in terms of the nominations on there. Um, Anita Omar Palo, Domi and J Beck, Muni Long, Samara Joan Lato, Maniskin, Tubby Dingui, Molly Toto, and Wet Leg. I, I, I'd stretch, I'd just say Wet Leg. I banged out that album. I absolutely enjoyed it. Um, I wouldn't give it to Anita. Like, imagine Anita winning flipping Grammys of a new Best Artist. Are you insane? Uh, <laughs> best Pop Performance, I don't care. Best Pop Duo Performance, I don't care. Best vocal or pop album, I don't care. Best dance electronic recording. Break My Soul, you got Bonobo on here, Diplo and Miguel, David Guetta, <laughs> and Baby Rex. Oh, mate, I don't know. I'd probably give it to Rufus the Soul on my knees. Standard. Let's go with that one. Best electronic dance album, I'd definitely give it to Rufus Surrender again. Um, and then let's continue on. Best rock performance. Oh my God, of course it would be patient number nine, Rosie Auburn with Jeff Beck. What else is going to be? Oh no, actually, Turnstar. Let's go for, no, fuck that. We'll go Turnstar Holiday as best rock performance or Idols Crawl for sure. 
those are the two I'd go for, but they're not going to win. You know, that is going to happen. Best Metal Performance, Ghost gets fucking nominated every year, don't they? Let's go for... Let's do Megadeth. Let's give it to Megadeth. Let's give it to those old fogies. We'll be back by Megadeth. We'll get it for me. And then Best Rock Album, The Black Keys, Elvis Costello, and then Post. Really? Okay. Um, let's do Spoon Lucifer on the sofa. Machine Gun Kelly being included in Best Rock Album is legitimately hilarious, in my opinion. Um, best Alternative Music Album. We got We Arcade Fire, Dragon, New Warm Mountain, I Believe in You by Big Thief, which is a really good album. That came out at the top of the year, I think, maybe February. So maybe that's something that people have forgotten about. But I really enjoyed that. We got Whatever, Fosora by Bjork, Wet Leg, Wet Leg, Call It Down by the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs, which is good in past, but I don't think... I don't know, man. That Yeah, Yeah, Yeah album was a little bit underwhelming. So I'm going to go for Big Thief, best alternative album. They probably won't win, but I'll go for Big Thief. Best R&B performance, you got Virgo's Groove, Beyonce here with me, Mary J. Blige, Hers and Hers, Mooney Long, Over Lucky Day. Yeah, let's go for uh, no, let's go for Jasmine Sullivan. She deserves that, man. Hurt me so good. I'd love if Jasmine Sullivan got a flipping Grammy. Best R&B performance, we don't care about that. Best R&B song, Cuff It, Good Blood. How many nominations has Beyonce got? She's everywhere on this, isn't it? God damn. Best progressive R&B album. Operation Funk, Corey Henry, Gemini Rights by Steve Lacey, Drones, Terrence Markin. <sighs> Best R&B progressive album. Let's go for Steve Lacey, Gemini Rights. Let's do that. Best R&B album. It's, it's, it's a criminal that Summer Walker's not on this. It's absolutely criminal. They've got Mary J. Blige, Chris Brown. Oh, Chris Brown's been nominated. Interesting. A deluxe as well. Okay. Um, Robert Glassbine. <laughs> come on man lucky day is good pj morton whatever um yeah let's give it to lucky day for me i'm just giving it to people that don't usually get grammys i've never had one just because i think that will go a longer way than everything else in my opinion uh best rap performance god did you know that's definitely payola how the hell did that get best rap performance pushing p gun and young fuck it definitely gonna not go not gonna win but i give it to them that'd be a great thing to to find out why you're in prison to be fair keep your mood up and whatnot and the rest best rap album is insane i like jack harlow like kanye west said about lady gaga being a creative director of kodak i like jack harlow he's got some great songs but what does he know about having the best rap album that's insane that he's got a nomination for the best rap album for an album that was widely panned as not a good album and not because it was it it wasn't good because it just wasn't good, right? It was like there were some good moments here and there. I thought I'm a, I'm a big believer that I'm still going record and saying he has one of the better flows in hip hop. I like how he sounds sonically on a record. It just his tone sounds good, and I have a lot, you know, I put a lot of credence into that stuff. But when it comes to a, an album from front to back, it was incredibly forgetful and very repetitive, in my opinion. So to have that as rap album of the year is ridiculous because he can do much better and that album will probably not get nominated you know what i mean that's the irony of this whole thing uh, mr morale the big step is by kendrick lamar obvious you know inclusion there um but for me if i was going for anybody it'd obviously be my guy future i never liked you or it would have to be um it's almost dry by pusha t that would be my first two in that regard but it has stirred up a bit of controversy with people everyone's getting their knickers in a twist to be honest but for me i feel like the inclusion of flipping bad bunny as best record of the year with it being an entirely a record full of flipping spanish songs essentially a, a reggaeton flipping you know special a reggaeton banger it's pretty amazing and just goes to show how powerful and amazing that guy is for me he's the spanish flipping or sorry he's the puerto rican elton john maybe even bigger than that in terms of his range his ability to make whatever and get on certain bops like it's incredible the moment he the moment he learns english or the moment he starts to sing in english and goes down that route he's gonna kill i don't think he will because he's clearly somebody that cares a lot about his roots and wants to stay true but if he does decide to ever go the english route he's gonna be murdering people i swear to god he is he really is bad bunny to the moon bruv next here i want to quickly feature some looks courtesy of the stussy holiday 2022 lookbook 
And I've mentioned here plenty of times how much of a fan I am of Stussy. I feel like they're one of the better um, streetwear brands out there. I feel like they give Supreme a run for their money. And I feel like, aside from Supreme, they're one of the most consistent streetwear brands out there. And it's pretty cool to see because some years ago, Stussy was kind of falling by the wayside. They were going the way of Fresh Jive. They were going the way of Diamond Supply. They were going the way of... Um, I can't name a few more, but you know what I mean. Those kind of once great streetwear brands that kind of put took their foot off the gas, kind of took their eye off things, you know, got comfortable and let things kind of get away from them. But they kind of regained it. I think it started from, you know, drop, pulling back some of the distribution and whatnot and maybe improving the design team. I'm not too sure, but whatever. The stuff they put out every season is so flames. It legitimately is so flames and the, the and the customers agree because some of the more interesting and more stellar pieces sell out in minutes and i'm sure they make as as much as maybe maybe more quantities than some of the big brands out there so the lookbook here as first you've got a classic stadium jacket with the stussy script at the back i like um what would you call that i'll call like a golf print but whatever it is i like it they've got these camo or tree camo or tree bark print shorts or pants in a pink that look absolutely banging i like that i like this print with the coat which looks kind of tie-dye-ish that looks really nice i like obviously those down jacket pants they look really good and this dragon fleece went went crazy it sold out in all colors when i checked it recently as well so i'm not surprised that dragon fleece is banging that leather jacket looks absolutely stellar this looks like something that used to make in the heydays of flipping our legacy when our legacy was really good this is what they used to be able to make classic great leather timeless pieces that you could wear all year round and i like that t-shirt or i guess it's a sleeveless jumper i'm pretty sure or, or what you call it a sweater vest um with a face printed i'm not too sure what that is looks like some sort of roman sculpture maybe you got some camo pants there also i'm not too sure what the shoes are those jordans i don't know what the shoes are is that a collaboration not too sure but that could be interesting to keep an eye on then you've got here the next slide uh, you've got a denim shirt with some nice pants on. Here you've got the jacket with the script logo on the back. Funny enough, I think I mentioned a few times how I get frustrated and annoyed with Supreme because it feels like they overdo the logos. Like everything's got Supreme or SUP on the back or something or whatever else. But for some reason, I guess because of the script, because of the logo, because of the style, because of the history of that flipping Stussy logo, it just sits right on rain jackets. It just sits right on technical jackets. It just looks badass. It really does. I don't know what it is about that logo, but if there is one logo, I would like to get emblazoned on my nuts, on my back, on my taint, on my arm, you know, on my leg. It would definitely be Stussy and probably a bathing ape. I love how that looks, Bape or a Baby Nable together. It looks incredible on clothing. And you've got another one. You've got a nice oversized, heavy, it looks like a, this is that felt? Yeah, I don't know what that is, shirt, but that looks really nice. And then the shoes, I'm not a fan of. They look like clogs. You can miss me with those. Nice pants as per usual. Okay, that's the sleeveless vest, that thing that I was talking about. It looks like a shoot from an old Stussy commercial. Maybe something from when they did that Chanel number no. five flip. Or maybe that's a makeup or lipstick. I'm not really sure what that is on the eye, but it looks pretty cool. Maybe it's an editorial piece from, um, what you call it, from ID. Um, the baseball jacket that I featured at the first, or that was featured first with the S at the front here which looks really nice it comes in the pine green that black or the pine green look cool and i don't know which one is the best color there's a black color like that or there's that green color both look pretty stellar don't they that green color is really really nice it's giving it's giving take ivy in it right it's giving my dad sent me here but i don't really want to be here and you got another one good tree camo i don't know what these shoes are they kind of look like black cat fours but i don't think they are i think they're just classic derby shoes or dr martin collabs or something but they look really nice for me they it's a very i don't know it's a very caucasian way to wear pants like this to wear them with flipping 1460s it feels really 1461s it feels really weird it feels like those kids in school who used to wear loafers with tracksuit bottoms but that's the thing a lot of flipping you know some of my caucasian brothers and sisters do they wear dress shoes with flipping track pants it's a real chavvy you know it's a real larping like your working class type thing that i'm not a fan of to be fair if i'm honest um let's continue here 
Um, you've got another one. Oh, a nice sweat with the Stussy logo again printed on it, which I'm a big fan of. They look like zebra-y type pants that I like. Dr. Martin boots uh, collaboration. So those are coming very soon. Again, the Dr. Martin shoes. Oh, look at that knit. That knit looks very nice, right? Um, it's giving Gustav Klimt, but I'm pretty sure it's not. That's nice. You've got a denim shirt here, over and over shirt with the jazzy pants and some converses. This looks like, you know, the this is like store owner vibes, right? You pull up with your keys jangling, ready to unload the boxes and disappoint some children. You've got a nice fleece vest here, what I like, which is kind of tie dye Not tie dye it's kind of, um. what's that print I was going to say? It's reminding me of some 80s print that you would see maybe on like a Nike tech challenge or something. That looks really, really nice. That fleece, oof. Oh, it's not a fleece, sorry, it's not a fleece vest. It looks like an actual, is that a fleece vest or a fleece? What, what do you think? I think it's a fleece vest, right? Or is that a, a neon long sleeve underneath? Let me say it's a vest. I'll say it's a vest. I do like that. I'm not going to lie. Nice deep pockets where you can stick a book or a sandwich in. I'm, I'm a real stickler for having big pockets on tops and jackets and shit. So it's, you've got enough room to fit a book and a sandwich inside it. I think that's really important, in my opinion. Oh, this fleece hoodie looks incredible. Incredible. It helps as well that the models to give the best blue still look. But this fleece looks really good. Oh, nice. This looks good. And matched up. This is probably my best, my favorite styling look. I've got to be honest. The browns with the greens and the black boots. And these kind of um, mountaineering. What, what's the brand called? Demir or how do you pronounce that brand name? Dana boots, I think. They've got this particular boot that everyone's wearing now. Um, most notably, Drake featured wearing them in that promo video for her loss with him and 21 Savage. has got all the screens in the back. He's wearing a pair. But everyone seems to be into these type of boots at the moment for the winter. Oh, that dragon fleece again in yellow. <laughs> Absolutely flames. Like, you can't even say anything more. That thing looks hot. Oh, 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 man juice all over the place. Yo, this Stussy down jacket, orange, is fire. This might be my piece of the season. This might be something I actually try and buy. I know the pants come together with it. I know they've got the orange pants featured up there, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to wear, oh, are those, what are those, um, not called pennies, of, what's the, what's the Nike are those? Anyway, let's get distracted. Go back to the, the down jacket. I need this. If this comes in purple also, I'm going to faint. But the orange already looks banging to me, um, especially something, because I've already got an orange North Face, so that might be a bit weird, but I don't wear it day to day, it's just something I wear around the hood. But if I want to go out and stuff and stunt, this Stussy down jacket is looking like the one. This looks amazing. Look how big that front pocket is. It extends all the way until the hem. No, i got, I got, I got to try and get my hands on that. that that's, that's, that's fantastic. And those Nikes, I forgot the name. I forgot the name of them. But there's some, they're, uh, I forgot the name, but they're a basketball shoe. Oh, look, see, it's giving our legacy. There's a there's like a faux leather vest that's got, if I'm not mistaken, oh, look at that. It's got snap buttons instead of um, regular buttons. That's really cool. That would look amazing as an overshirt as one here. Oof, I like that. That's a good date night shirt, mate. You know what I mean? That's a good shirt to wear to go Jaguar shoes or something. Pop in, have a little drink, hang out. You know what I mean? pick up some 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 shortish 40s and keep it moving and they've got like some point toe i guess these are dr martin 1461s i think they are if i'm not mistaken they're two there's one with a rounded toe and one with a pointy toe i never wore any of them anyway even though i used to work at dr martin's i could get stuff for free i always prefer to wear flipping 1460s and shit which i'm assuming are the hybrids i'm pretty sure right 1460s i'm always a fan of those more oh that orange this orange that they've got and these converses ever since i've been wearing my um dead in tears converses i'm a fan of converses now honestly they don't suit me i don't think uh but i do like them i am still wearing them regardless uh, another one here is this the last row no let's just go scan through quickly them these combat pants are cool uh it looks like a, i think that's that recycled bobber jacket that's currently on sale that looks really nice a good little overshirt this is giving kind of music this fit right with the green shirt and the vest and the little necklace it's giving kind of music it's giving um, uh, um it's giving um chaos in the cbd right this is giving this look here <laughs> another one a nice yeah there's a lot of orange in this collection today or this season it feels like a lot of orange and greens oh those pants are banging what are those i want those pants give me those pants and that jacket and we're going sizzler baby i mean we are going sizzler let's continue a few more here don't waste more of your time some nice knits nice 
trousers again does those nikes again this dude has the same face in every single shoe in it feels like he doesn't change his expressions all the same um oh look at this look <laughs> and look it's fire you got the tree camo print on the jacket that looks like um what would you say what jacket is that called again um it's like a trucker jacket right that sort of short jacket, long and a little bit elongated on the sleeves. Two nice big pockets here on the front. Nice zip in pink, that kind of tree all over print. Um, camo, whatever it may be. And the same there. Looking like a cholo with that foot pose. Like, oh, 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 that looks really good. Nice pink sweat there. That's going to that's gonna do numbers. People love those pink sweats. And again, are those snap buttons or are those button buttons? I wonder if they do that. That would be quite interesting, isn't it? The snaps do wear out over time, but still, some boots there and some jackets. But yeah, oh, that looks really cool. Photography, Liam McRae. Uh, I don't know who did the styling, but whoever does the styling at Stussy, you should take a bow, man. You make me want to buy everything. <laughs> Honestly, this is so good. Oh, I need it all. I need it all, my friends. I need it bloody all. I swear to God, I need it all. And soon come anyway. All of it's dropping, what, November 4th? I think what they got featured so far anyway let's look at let's look at it what, what do they have featured that we can purchase my jacket i want isn't on there just yet the tree camo jacket i want either isn't on there just yet the one i was just talking about and wanking over um yeah none of the stuff that i want is there just yet it feels like oh sorry let's do shop let's do new let's see is anything new dropped i don't think so for the new collection okay you got some of the pants here you don't have is that the one that was in green also this ripstop surplus one let me sorry let me put this up on the screen is that the one no, okay it only comes in that one color so that's a different one uh let's go back and let's see the other ones Oops, let's go back to new is there anything i want available just yet nope it's just no colors that sell out right the black sold out more hmm or nothing else that i need here the orange pants are there that looks really cool but all the other stuff in the lookbook hasn't necessarily dropped yet so all the good stuff is still up and coming i guess that tree camo thing that i was wanking over i think it's this no it's not that jacket because it had two big front pockets is it this style one maybe it's that one that white canvas one i'm not too sure oh that's a big jumper that i was talking about the shaggy cardigan oh that looks really nice okay it's not snaps it's just regular buttons right um 24l pearl buttons wow this looks so good that color on black skin absolute banger mate absolute banger the model is five foot eight and wearing a medium it's quite baggy does not it i do like that i'm not going to lie i do like that very very much <laughs> oh inside out wrangling looks cool but yeah my jacket that i want isn't available just yet um neither are the pants so oh that's the that's the other pant i wanted i think but yeah i'll shop later i don't want to bore you with this stuff but yeah big up stussy they're smashing it they are smashing it so i just saw these um features online and the power of flipping influencer marketing is still real uh, some people who i follow some people who i don't have all been posting that they were gifted and seeded a pair of these boots sky high workwear and bogs come together for eco-friendly boots i'm not really that familiar with sky high workwear but when i did my googles and searched around i found out that sky high workwear or sky high farm is in part something launched by dan colon the um legendary new york artist who was part of all that whole um downtown les scene that i was obsessed with when i was in flipping uni friends with aaron bondaroff and whatnot and just a legit artist in his own right i remember that iconic painting that he once did of um i think it was like a blue candle was that the one that he did if i'm not mistaken right dan colon blue is it out is it out of the blue sorry, is it out of the blue is that the one yeah that's the one that is the one actually that's the one that i remember um from him that i thought was absolutely incredible um that painting right this one here can you see on the screen yeah there it is this one that's why i remember of dan colin and just being you know generally the guy around town one of the close friends of um says r.i.p and just an overall good egg it seems like it 
and I guess these this brand has been doing collaborations with Tremaine Emery on Denim Tears and a few other people and they put together these boots which I'm a fan of but I wonder if this whole workwear trend boot thing this whole like you know utility boot rain boot whatever it may be called that Kanye popularized I wondered if it was kind of it's kind of saw its natural end but I guess because especially in London it's been really wet and windy and stuff at, um, during the winter months and I guess it's not going to snow that much or probably be this windy all the way through these are probably the perfect boots to wear if you live in a place like New York you live in a place like London you live in a place like Berlin and stuff where it does get wet and soggy and whatnot having a pair of boots like this that you can just wear and put on and not be bothered about stepping in puddles and stuff is super helpful especially in London because we have streets sometimes that don't have great flipping lighting there's no lamppost so sometimes you're walking down the street and you don't realize there's a puddle in front of you and you step in there and you know and your whole pair of hirachis gets absolutely drenched which is obviously not fun so these will be a good thing to actually wear i'm not that you know i'm these are things good actually wear to be honest so it comes around so to continue um, the article here says coming off the heels of a collaboration with Tremaine emery and then tears sky high farms workwear engages another collaboration endeavor with with bogs or bgos the capsule showcases both brands shared ethos in new lads and sustainable materials um doing outreach to communities that they need it going in hudson valley new york the non-profit 30 acre farm utilizes oh yeah true dan colin is into farming in it maybe last time i checked around i saw him out on a farm doing some things as well as working with a wide range of local and regional organizations to improve access to fresh foods in under deserved communities in new york the newest capsule delivers a reimagined bogs workman boot crafted with eco-friendly algae and comes in a camo and black colorway displayed in each silhouette is sky half farm logo signals near additionally the boots also feature neoprene waterproof insulation which is that bit there at the top which i'm not really a fan of but i like regardless all proceeds from the purchase all proceeds from the purchase of the boots are donated to sky high farms the retailers that partner with sky high farm workwear must make an upfront donation to the non-profit organization oh okay i see what they're doing there it's all the money from the sales of the collaborations go to the running of the farm that's pretty fun and really interesting i like that the sky high and bus collaborative footwear will be dropping um at north Shore and Dove street market and sky high farms footwear.com what great retailers to have on board right one two three of these oh sorry one two one two of the biggest and then your own of course nordstrom and dover street market and like really good but these boots i tried my best to kind of get involved in this trend but it didn't really work out for me because i did actually end up purchasing a pair i purchased two i purchased these i purchased these sort of like I think they're called uh, German service boots or something. I got them on eBay. But unfortunately, they're a UK 10. So they come up a little bit short on the feet. So I think they're like a 44, if I'm not mistaken, in terms of size. Let me see down underneath. It doesn't tell me, does it? it? doesn't say. But I'm pretty sure they're a 44. So that's the unfortunate side of things. I purchased these and they're not the correct size for me to wear. So if you are a 44, then reach out to me if you want a pair and I'll give them to you. Just got to pay for the shipping, I guess there you go right you can have these but then the ones i do want to wear that and i haven't got a chance to wear are these bad boys i purchased from flipping ebay they're yds um you know fireman boots whatever they may be and they look very insulated they're very big and chunky but i haven't got around to wearing them day to day so i wonder if that's a thing that i'm actually need to do now i actually worn them once i think to fabric but apart from that i haven't necessarily worn them out properly yet but these might be the ones to kind of get involved with but i do like them shape wise i had to cut off these flaps they had on them here i think the flaps were sweet as i like, stick your foot in and out but i didn't like how they looked and they kept flipping around so i took them off but yeah these are the ones i have they're a little bit ugly aren't they but i kind of like them i'm not going to like i'm a big fan of massive boots so these kind of work for me anyway regardless but yeah that's me man that's me anyway that has been the show I'm going to leave you now, please, please, please. So, yeah, so anyway, that's been the show. I'm going to leave you now. Thanks again for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company. It really has. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy whatever it is you're going to do for the rest of the day. If you're going to sleep, if you're going to stay awake, whatever it may be. Thank you for carving out a hour or so of your day to listen to my nonsense ramblings. I always appreciate it. As per usual, if you listen to the audio podcast, you will hear my tune of the day. And if you're just watching a video stream, you will not hear any tune of the day. And I'll just fade out into black. But apart from that, take care and be well, my friends. Peace.